Hey, what's cracking, everybody? On today's video, we're going to continue on our journey as to uh, what's the uh, best system for uh, Windows users since uh, Windows is, uh, you know, doing, they're doing what they're doing over there. So a lot of folks are coming over to uh, Linux and we want to show them what's the proper uh, system to start off with. Um, earlier in the week, I made a video on uh, Zorin OS. Uh, that one's up on the channel right now. So you go take a look at that. And then uh, a couple of days ago, I made a video on a system called Anduin OS, which is made by one of the uh, engineers over from uh, Microsoft itself. So one of their uh, ex-developers made his own uh, Linux system. And uh, you can check out that video also. But this time, we're going to take a look at Linux Mint. Linux Mint has always been uh, known for being the one true system to get uh, everybody off of uh, Windows and bring them over to Linux. This is the start off point from Linux. Then from here, you know, the world is at your fingertips and you can play with whatever system you want to play with. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at uh, Linux Mint. And the version I decided to look at this time says, uh, there's videos already of me taking a look at Linux Mint, and uh, but I don't think I've ever looked at a Debian edition. So that's what I'm going to do on this video. I'm going to take a look at LMDE 7 GG. LMDE Linux Mint Debian Edition. And it says right here on the website, LMDE is a Linux Mint project, which stands for Linux Mint Debian Edition. Its goal is to ensure Linux Mint can continue to deliver the same user experience if Ubuntu was ever to disappear. It allows us to assess how much we depend on Ubuntu and how much work would be involved in such an event. Linux Mint Debian Edition is also one of our development targets. As such, it guarantees the software we develop is compatible outside of Ubuntu. Okay, so I got it up in a virtual machine, so let's head on over there and take a look at uh, LMDE 7 GG. Okay, and once your ISO is uh, booted up onto your virtual machine or bare metal, you see there is a button on the top left and it says install Linux Mint. So all you have to do is uh, double click here and it should open up the Ubiquiti installer. Uh, this, like I said, this is the first time I'm taking a look at uh, LMDE, the uh, Debian edition version. So uh, right here is a button that says, let's go. Let's go. All right. So English, United States, select it, click next. America, Los Angeles, click next. My keyboard layout is English, US, click next. Now let's enter some uh, user info. The username is going to be test. Computer name is going to be test LMDE. And I'm going to give it a strong and complicated password. I'll repeat that. And of course, I'm going to log in automatically. Click next. Uh, now we have to uh, select our installation type. So right now it's selected for automatic installation. Erase disk and install LMDE on it. So I just have to choose my disk. There it is. Now, if I want to use LVM, logical volume management, I can do that. Or I can select manual partitioning. But I'm going to stick with the automatic installation. Click next. This will delete all data on VDA, 42 gigabytes. Yep. No partition table was found on the hard drive, VDA. Do you want the installer to create a set of partitions for you? Yes. Install the Grub boot menu on, I'm just gonna leave it on default. All right, here's a summary of what it's gonna do. All right. And now it's installing. So I'll go ahead and I'll pause the video now. And if everything installs successfully, we'll take a look at it. LMDE, Linux Mint Debian Edition 7. Okay, we're back now and you can see we have it fully installed now. And it says, welcome to Linux Mint. Welcome to your new operating system. This welcome screen will guide you through your first steps show you how to find help and where to get more information about Linux Mint. 
On behalf of the development team and everyone involved in the project, we'd like to thank you for choosing Linux Mint. We hope you'll enjoy using it as much as we enjoy working on it. Have a great time and don't hesitate to send us your feedback. Let's go. All right, so if you're a new user coming over from uh, Windows, you know, this would be a good place to start, of course. That's why they put it here in place. And you will click right here where it says let's go and it takes you to the first steps. And from right here, you know, you could change some theming styles right off the bat. So let's go ahead and launch this and you'll see how you could change some uh, color schemes and stuff like that. So right now we're on Mint Y. We could change it to dark. Uh, yeah, I'll move this to the side so you can see the accent colors in action. So basically you can just like uh, right now you can set it to green. So you see how the color over here on first steps change to green. If you want to change it to like a reddish color, now it's a reddish color. Give it a purple look. Now it's on a purple look. So, or if you want your theme to be light, you can change it to light, but it'll keep the accent color. And then you can use mixed. But I like it always to be on the dark theme. It's just a force of habit for me. But of course, you being used to Windows, you'll probably be first used to the light theme. And then you will cross over onto the uh, dark theme soon. All right. And that's pretty much how the desktop colors work. All right. And then we have something here called system snapshots. So if you click on this, you can uh, just give it your password first and then you can set up backups for your system. So I'm not going to go through this. I just want to show you that it's here in place and, you know, you can set it up and click it and do whatever you want with it. All right. And right below the uh, snapshots, you have multimedia codecs. So right here, if you launch this right here, it should, uh, you know, update the cache as it's doing right now. And then uh, it'll set up your media codecs. It'll probably be a separate installation. Uh, in typical, if you install the typical uh, Linux Mint uh, versions, they'll uh, install automatically during the installation. But right here, you can actually choose to install them. But uh, I'm not going to go through that. All right. And then you have an update manager right here. So if you click on this button, it'll take you to your system updater. So in this case, you click on OK, and then it's going to refresh the whole system. And then it's going to look for the uh, updates, and it'll show you what's uh, available to be updated. And if you want to update it, you just click on Install Updates. All right. And then you have your system settings, which we already took a look at. So, you know, these are your system settings. Did we take a look at them or not? Well, anyways, this is Cinnamon. And, uh, you know, every system pretty much has a system settings, you know, KDE, Pla you know, Plasma, XFCE, they all have their own version of system settings. And this is basically where you can uh, set all your uh, your main uh, settings for the system that you're installed on. In this case, it's Cinnamon. So, you know, you have your appearance settings, your preferences, your hardware and your administration. And you could also search right here. All right. And then you have a software manager. So if you want to install, you know, more software that's not already installed, you can open this up and, you know, it takes a couple of minutes for the cache to, you know, populate, but it only does this on the first time. Then after that, it'll just open up, you know, quick. So we'll just wait for it to uh, generate the cache and then we'll take a look and see what uh, software is available for you to install. Okay, and you can see right here, it opens up. Let me make this a uh, full screen so you can get a, a bigger view of it. So from right here, you know, you got category, you got the featured, which is on top. These are your featured apps. Then you have categories. So you have like accessories, internet, sound, and so on. And then you have your top rated. But you can also use the search function right here. So let's say you wanted to look for a Chrome or Chromium. You can see right here, you got Chromium and you can go ahead and install it. Then you click on the back button to go back. And basically you can install pretty much whatever it is you're looking for as long as it's available, you know, on Linux. And this is Debian. And one thing to note about Debian is that Debian holds its uh, software back a couple of versions. Not be, not they, they do it for a reason. It's because they want to make sure that it's stable and working well. So just because it's a couple versions old does not mean that it doesn't work. It just means that it's a stable version. So they stick with the stable. That's one thing to note about Debian. Everything they do is stable. 
All right, so this is your software manager. We could take a look at the about and it is Mint install. All right, and then last but not least, you have a firewall right here. So again, you give it your password and then you could just set it. So all you have to do is just click on the button right here and bam, it's set. Firewall enabled and you could just go ahead and close it. All right, and these are all part of your first steps. Then of course you have your documentation, your help, and if you wanna contribute, you can go ahead and launch this and contribute to them. And if you don't, this is gonna start up every time you reboot the system, but if you don't want it to start up again, you just click on this button right here. All right. All right, so you can see right here, the uh, desktop layout is very similar to Windows more like a Windows XP, Windows 7 type of a uh, setup, you know. So, you know, you got your panel on the bottom, you got your system tray on the right, where you have your date and time. You have your volume rocker, have your internet connection, you have your mounted devices, you have your update manager, and then you have, uh, what's this right here? It's like some notifications, system reports, then on the left, you're gonna have a few uh, pinned applications. You got your terminal, your web browser, and your file manager. And then all the way on the far is gonna be, of course, your menu. What you would call the start menu is just the application launcher here or a menu. And clicking on this, you can see right here, it's, it's almost uh, similar to what you know you would see on XP or seven, but you know it's 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 its own thing. And of course, right here, this list right here is gonna be the favorites. And you have Firefox, Software Manager, System Settings, Terminal, and your File Manager. And this is, of course, your Session Manager where you can you know, log out, shut down, reboot, lock. And then right here, you have all your uh, applications listed in order. So you got them all applications right here. These are all alphabetical. You just scroll through pretty much basically everything you have on your system. Then of course, you have accessories, graphics, internet, office, sound and video, administration, preferences, your places, which is gonna be your folder layout, and your recent files. Then of course you have a search right here. So let's say you're looking for uh, Firefox, just start typing and it should come up. All right, so uh, like I said, uh, you know, Windows is over there, uh, they're doing their own thing and they're uh, they're really uh, fumbling the bag real hard right now. And uh, it's bringing a lot of users over to uh, Linux. And uh, like I said, this is a good, this is the best place to start, in my opinion. This is my opinion and my opinion only. If you want to start off on Linux, start with Linux Mint. This will do it. And then from here, once you learn the system a bit, then you can move on to whatever it is you want to move on to. You have other type of systems like Fedora or Arch. You know, there, there's there's so many different types of systems that uh, you can play with. But you want to start here. This way you get, a, you get a handle for things. Now, being right here, you know, you see that there's a terminal right here, but you don't really need to use it. You know, you have your software managers, you have your web browsers, you have, you know, everything that you need. So you really don't need to touch the terminal. You know, the terminal is, is one of the biggest scaring points in Linux. So let me open up the terminal here and then I'll make it a full screen. This right here, I know if you're on Windows, this scares you a lot because it, you know, it, it taps into something in your system that makes you think that, you know, you're going to easily break something, but you're not, you know. It, it's it's uh Linux the way Linux is set up especially like Linux man it's set up in a way where you're not gonna break nothing it's not it's not nothing's gonna break if you I mean you can break something but it, you know you would have to type a, a a specific uh a specific amount of characters in order to do that and for you to do that you know that's why that's why you know you don't want to go on a website and just copy a uh, copy commands and just paste them, you know, without knowing what they do. But certain things you could do on here, for example, you want to install some software, you would type sudo. Every time you're going to type uh, install software, you type sudo first. And being a Debian base, you will type app install. sudo apt install, 
and then you follow it with whatever it is you want to install. In this case, let's just say uh, HTOP. I'm pretty sure it's already installed, but we're just going to, you know, do it for, for giggles. You just click enter on your keyboard, and it's going to ask you for your password. You give it your password, and it goes through the installation. And it's pretty much that simple. Now HTOP is installed. So if I just type in HTOP, it's going to give me my uh, system uh, resources. So let me uh, make this bigger. All right, so you can see right here, we're only using 1.12 gigabytes out of four gigabytes on our RAM, and our load averages are very low. So you can see this is a this is just one example of using a terminal. There, there's there's so many uh, examples within itself that uh, you really don't have to uh, get in here. Like I said, you know, this is just uh, I'm just giving you an example of things that you can do with your terminal. One thing to note, let me go ahead and close this terminal first. One thing to note is that on every computer, every operating system, everything that you do, it actually has the terminal in the background doing all the work. You're just using a graphical interface to deal with it. Everything that works on your computer works in the terminal. It's just that everything is set up with a graphical interface in order for you to see it and be pretty and this, that, and the other. But everything, everything is all operated on the terminal. And that's one of the bases of uh, Linux that helps you uh, understand that function. Every, every single app right here, every single anything on any, even on Windows, it's just that you don't know that it's doing it in, on Windows. You don't you don't recognize it, but that's actually what it's doing. It's just Python and Bash and all other kinds of scripts that are working in the background in the terminal, making the graphical interface come to life. But it's all done in the term. Your entire computer basically is the terminal. But, uh, you know, you'll never learn that being on Windows. And especially if you've been on Windows for so long, you know, some of you guys have been on it for 30, 40 years. And that's all, you know. And you just don't realize that everything is done in a, you know, in a terminal setting. It's just that graphical interfaces, images, and all this. That's why on Windows, you know, so much RAM gets used because the terminal is just calling up so many things. I mean, besides the ads and all the stupid things that it does, it's all, every program has to, you know, pull up images and pull up this from this source and pull up that. It, all, it does it all with a terminal in the background. But all you see is the graphical interface that's going on. All right. So I, ho I hope this uh, helped you out. You know, if you are uh, a Windows refugee and you're coming over to Linux and you're looking for something good to uh, get start with, uh, just always remember Linux Mint is the place to start off with. Start with Linux Mint, put it on a virtual machine or, you know, dual boot it onto your system. And then from there, I promise you, it'll open up a whole new world for you. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and uh, subscribe. Uh, if you like the video you just saw, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, hey, by all means, give it a thumbs down. It's all fair game here on Linux Hub Prime. And that's going to do it for this video. And I'm out.